Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, good morning to everyone in person. Good morning to our friends on Zoom and welcome to Chesterland UCC and welcome to our weekly service. And as we say in the UCC, wherever you are on life's journey, you are absolutely welcome here. I don't care who you are, how you dress, whom you love, whether you're Barbie or Oppenheimer, it doesn't matter. We welcome you as you are. I haven't seen either yet, so I, I, I don't know where I land, but it's probably Barbie. It's probably, yeah, I'm sure it is, yeah. Our moment of focus this morning, which is from the book Borderlands, La Frontera, The New Mestiza by Gloria Anzaldúa. By creating a new mythos, that is a change in the way we perceive reality, the way we see ourselves, and the ways we behave, La Mestiza, a woman with many identities, creates a new consciousness. The work of Mestiza consciousness is to break down the subject-object duality that keeps her prisoner and to show in the flesh and through the images in her work how duality is transcended. The answer to the problem between the white race and the colored, between males and females, lies in healing the split that originates in the very foundation of our lives, our culture, our languages, our thoughts. A massive uprooting of dualistic thinking in the individual and collective consciousness is the beginning of a long struggle, but one that could, in our best hopes, bring us to the end of rape, of violence, of war. And just a quick note, this is from a book that is about 25 years old. So a, a term like the colored is obviously uh, uncouth today, uh, but consider the overall context. Sacred One, as we bring these offerings, we remember all that remains unresolved around us. We pray for all who hunger, for all who are weighed down with economic burdens, and for every heart heavy with anxiety about tomorrow's troubles. Bless these gifts to the work of all that brings peace through justice, through love and care, and through the knowledge of your presence with us. May it be so. Amen. Today's scripture passage is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37, and I am reading from the Inclusive Bible. An expert on the law stood up to put Jesus to the test and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Jesus answered, What is written in the law? How do you read it? The expert on the law replied, You must love the Most High God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, you have answered correctly. Do this exactly, and you'll live. But the expert on the law, seeking self-justification, pressed Jesus further, and just who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, there was a traveler going down from Jerusalem to Jericho who fell prey to robbers. The traveler was beaten, stripped naked, and left half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. The priest saw the traveler lying beside the road, but passed on by the other side. Likewise, there was a Levite who came the same way. This one, too, saw the afflicted traveler and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who was taking the same road, also came upon the traveler and, filled with compassion, approached the traveler and dressed the wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then the Samaritan put the wounded person on a donkey, went straight to an inn, and there took care of the injured one. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver pieces and gave them to the innkeeper with the request, look after this person, and if there is any further expense, I'll repay you on the way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the traveler who fell in with the robbers? And the answer came, the one who showed compassion. Jesus replied, then go and do the same. 
So this morning, I want to talk a little bit about borders, how we construct borders, why we construct borders, and all the places that we create borders. And I want to talk about borders because I was chatting online with a uh, with a non-religious friend, uh, and we were talking religion, and she asked me a pretty pointed question, and she asked, can you just tell me what the point of Christianity is? And it's an, and it wasn't being asked in a snotty way. It was actually a very excellent question. She was probing. Um, some of our more conservative brethren would probably say that the point of Christianity was to accept Jesus as your personal savior in order to avoid going to hell. Um, but that doesn't work for some of us. The point of Christianity for you might be community. Um, for others, it might be the persistent and unrelenting call uh, for justice that is embodied in the figure of Jesus. The point of Christianity for someone else might be its use as sort of a existential doorway into questions of who we are and why we are here. But what I told this person was that for me, for me personally, the point of Christianity, the story of Jesus, is one of how we respond to the other in our midst. Jesus is regularly addressing this within the Gospels. He meets people who are ostracized by society, and he tells them they matter. And even Jesus himself becomes the other. On the cross, Jesus is rejected by his friends. He's betrayed by religious authorities, and he's executed by political leaders. All of the systems which give us meaning in life were stripped from him, leaving him with nothing and no one, the ultimate other. And this embracing of otherness, this erasing of borders that comes with this, for me, that is the point of Christianity. But we love our borders. We love our borders. Both the figurative borders that we can erect in our lives, but also the literal borders that, that demarcate uh, everything from uh, who are good sports fans and who are bad sports fans. Michigan people suck. Ohio people are awesome. Why? Because there's a border, an invisible border right there. You know, can't you tell? We do that with everything. This county is conservative. This county is liberal. Well, I mean, yes, technically. This country is a good country. This country is a bad country. Well, what makes the difference? Well, borders, borders. We have our borders. We're so excited about borders that right now politicians are using immigrants who are trying to cross our border for a better life. Politicians are using them as, as pawns to score points with their political base. Both Governor Abbott out of Texas and DeSantis out of Florida have regularly been busing undocumented immigrants around the country as basically a, a, just a cruel middle fing finger to this administration, this current presidential administration. Last Christmas Eve, 139 immigrants were bused to the vice presidential mansion in weather that was in the teens, and the immigrants who were dropped off weren't even given coats in that weather. This past week, a three-year-old child died on one of those buses. And just in case you haven't gotten the message that cruelty is actually the point of all this, Governor Abbott has been installing floating water barriers to deter crossings across the Rio Grande River, barriers that literally have rotating metal blades in between the buoys. There have been reports that some people have died as a result of this, they haven't been confirmed, but would it be any surprise? And why do we do this? Why are we so concerned about borders? Well, the answer is as simple as much as, as it is physically 
complex? And the answer simply is that borders create kind of this idea of safety. Borders are those imaginary yet very real demarcations that help us to define there from here, which sports teams are good, which sports teams are bad. Borders are created so that we can more easily discern us from them, the neighbor from the stranger, the friend from the enemy. With a border, you are, you are either in or out. You are either accepted or rejected. So even if you're treating the other with respect, as the Bible tells us to do hundreds of times, borders still create a category of the other that we must contend with. The fact that we say the other means that there is a category of the other. Borders also do something else. They create what we call border lands. Border lands are those liminal spaces, those vague and undefined places where people and ideas exist in a constant state of transition or flux or questioning. So for example, a borderland is created when male and female gender roles are consistently declared normative within a culture, and yet someone feels like maybe they don't belong to either category that's existing in a borderland. Uh, a borderland is created when people are, of color are told that all lives matter, while the shade of their skin puts them at greater risk for police brutality and incarceration. That is a borderland. A borderland is created when we are told that God loves everyone equally, but if you're gay or you're a woman, you cannot be ordained. The late feminist scholar Gloria Anzaldúa explored these liminal spaces in her book uh, called Borderlands, La Frontera. And this book is sort of designed with, a, the way she writes it, it's a series of theopoetic writings. It's not a narrative. It's poetry, also narrative. It's a very interesting book. And she's writing of her life growing up in the Me on the Mexico-Texas border as a queer Chicana. Anzal Dua's writings viscerally struggle with the tension of those in-between spaces that she had to wrestle with her whole life. And she writes this, this beautiful sort of poetic passage I'm going to read to you. And forgive me my Spanish in advance. To live in the borderlands means you are neither Hispania, India, Negra, Española, Negabasha, Eres, Mestiza, Mulata, Half-Breed. Caught in the crossfire between camps while carrying all five races on your back, not knowing which side to turn to, run from. To live in the borderlands means to put chile in the borscht, eat whole wheat tortillas, speak Tex-Mex with a Brooklyn accent, be stopped by La Migra at the border checkpoints. In the borderlands, you are the battleground where enemies are kin to each other. To survive the borderlands, you must live sin fronteras, be a crossroads. Now, obviously, Gloria Anzaldúa knows a thing or two about borders, but so did Jesus. Jesus knew a thing or two about borders and the borderlands that Anzaldúa actually writes of, and that the marginalized find themselves dwelling in every day. Historically, Jesus emerged from a people who were perpetually conquered and occupied, whether at the hands of Pharaoh, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, or the Romans. The Jewish people were always, as Anzal Dua describes, caught in the crossfire between camps, not knowing which side to turn to, run from. And into this world stepped Jesus, who spread a message of not only acceptance across borders, not only compassion for those existing within the borderlands, but he stood for and embodied the erasure of those borders themselves, of transcending the either or, of eliminating entirely the categories of excluded and included. This is modeled in today's text of the parable of the Good Samaritan. When asked by a lawyer 
uh, who his neighbor was, Jesus told a story of a person, a Jew, robbed and beaten, ignored by the holiest and most pious members of the community, but ultimately tended to by a Samaritan. Now, some of you have undoubtedly heard messages and sermons pointing out that Jews and Samaritans kind of hated each other. Jesus himself at one point is even rejected in Samaria. And that the moral of this uh, parable, generally, is that the idea of our neighbor should include our enemies. And that is absolutely a great moral takeaway from this story. Please take that moral, that we should love our enemies. But if we dig a little deeper, we quickly see that Jesus was saying so much more here, especially with regard to borders and borderlands. Because why did the Jews hate the Samaritans? Why would this story have been so radical and shocking to those listening? Why were the Samaritans excluded? Well, a quick history lesson tells us that Samaritans were actually Jews who studied from the Torah, and they also worshipped the Jewish God. However, they also had Gentile blood, the result of intermarriages with Assyrians who conquered them some 700 years earlier. And as such, Samaritans existed culturally, in a liminal space, in a borderland, neither Jew nor Gentile, yet both. Descendants of two worlds. Both worlds rejecting them. And so the parable of the Good Samaritan does more than tell us who our neighbor is. It does more than tell us to just love our enemy. That's the dualistic either or model that ultimately leads to exclusion. But what happens here is that Jesus's parable erases, erases the very borders between us and them, between citizen and undocumented immigrant, between friend and enemy. It's not that we reach across the border to love our enemy. It's that we shatter the border and take away the idea of enemy entirely. But how? That sounds great, right? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's all do that. But how are the borders dissolved in this parable? Well, it's not through religion, I'm sorry to tell you, which is uh, the religion is represented in the priest in the story. Don't think that it was a mistake that Jesus said a priest and then a Levite. It wasn't religion embodied in the priest, and it wasn't through ritual, which was represented in the Levite. But it's in and through compassion. Borders are dissolved when we show compassion and mercy. Followers of Jesus are called to treat their fellow human beings with kindness and compassion and respect and mercy, no matter the circumstance. Our actions of love and compassion are more important than our beliefs. Our actions of love and compassion are more important than obeying the law. Our actions of love and compassion are more important than our political affiliations. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus introduces a new world, a new narrative through his own form of theopoetics, just like Anzal Dua. And he tells a story of seeing another person, even a stranger, as family through an act of compassion and the embracing of what Jesus preached and what Jesus practiced. By putting behavior ahead of belief, we are held to a standard that transcends the rules of the societal rules of who is in and who is out. And even though exclusion was accepted within first century Palestine, that's why this 
this narrative would have been so shocking to people. And so exclusion was accepted within first century, first century Palestine, but Jesus was introducing an entirely new dynamic. He wasn't even talking about reform. He was talking about a new dynamic altogether, one that sought to lift humanity out of the borderlands, out of dualistic thinking, out of the violence of binaries. Gloria Ann Zaldua herself addressed this new kind of story when discussing her journey as a mestiza, as a woman of many cultural identities. And she wrote in our moment of focus, I'm not going to read the whole thing back, but she does write, by creating a new mythos, that is a change in the way we perceive reality, the way we see ourselves and the ways we behave, La Mestiza creates a new consciousness, a massive uprooting of dualistic thinking in the individual and collective consciousness is the beginning of a long struggle, but one that could, in our best hopes, bring us to the end of rape, violence, of war, unquote. The actions of a DeSantis and of an Abbott and even of a Biden with regard to immigrants seeking asylum is the result of our ongoing cultural narrative of inclusion and exclusion. This narrative can only change. This dynamic, these siloed concepts that we have created can only change through compassion. And to be compassionate is to recognize our utter interdependence with each other and to see other people, whether they are black, gay, old, young, documented, documented or undocumented, to see people as inescapably tied into our own lives and our own worlds. What happens to someone over there affects us here. They need to become us. We need to become them. The other must become known. And again, this only happens through compassion. I mentioned a few weeks ago that the Hebrew and Aramaic root word for compassion is rakam. Like rakam, sakam, robots, right? It's rakam. And that was a plural for, does anyone remember? What is rakam a plural for? What? Soccer? Oh, so they said soccer. I'm like, no, no, different message, different message. <laughs> uh, no, womb. Rakam is the Hebrew plural of the singular word womb. In other words, compassion is an understanding that we exist together in God's womb, which makes us all siblings, which makes us all connected. And through the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus makes the abstract notion of a divine womb concrete by teaching that the life-giving, border-destroying, all-embracing practice of compassion must take precedence above all things. If laws, rules, or traditions get in the way of acting with compassion, then they are unjust laws, rules and traditions. To be compassionate is to recognize our interdependence with one another in God's womb, to understand that there are no borders within God's womb. To be compassionate is to reject the cultural narratives of exclusion. To be compassionate is to reject the religious notion of what is sacred or what is profane. And to be compassionate is to reject the artificial criteria we have made within our society that makes someone legal or illegal. To be compassionate is to live as Jesus did, sin fronteras, without borders. May it be so. We shall overcome.
Before I do the benediction, just do me a quick favor. Everyone close your eyes. Be very still. No one talk. And just listen to the world around us. I love the sound of the water and the birds and the wind going through the leaves. Take that with you today. A calming sense. A compassionate sense. May you leave today standing in solidarity with those living in the borderlands. May you leave today encouraged and strengthened amidst your own borderlands. May you leave today feeling our utter interdependence on one another in this world, God's world, the divine womb. May you leave today embracing the way of compassion. May you leave today determined to live sin fronteras without borders. May it be so. Amen. Thank you all and have a wonderful week.